we're hooked up. Nice. And we should be live, and we are very nice. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel, and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is November 20th, 2020, and we're doing a math live stream. Open discussion, drop in tutoring session number 63 ish. And we've done a few of these uh, before, as you can tell by the numbering. I think we've been doing this for a couple of years now. And it's just me making myself available for a couple of hours, at least twice a month uh, during the school season to help people out with mathematics if they do need help. And uh, while we wait for notifications to come out, uh, let me tell you what this is all about. I do have a Patreon page somewhere here. There's my Patreon page. Uh, patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho if you want to follow this work if you want to know what this work is about patreon is a great place to start everything's layered on mathematics raka 42 i'm here so everyone has to <laughs> cannabis this is a math session everyone needs to do mathematics today everyone needs to math math mathematics today you're missing a zero on your 42 by the way should be raka 420 not raka 42 sleepy waves how are you doing damn long time i haven't been able to stop by in a chat what's up chicho doing well sleepy waves hope you're doing well i am on patreon gang i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share share like you can follow the work and if you like what you see and if you think this work could use your support patreon is a fantastic way to do so raka i tried it was taken oh no math is just impossible for me ah it's not impossible the only reason you might think it's impossible uh, is because you've allowed the centralized education system to pollute to your mind that is the only reason you think mathematics is impossible because math is an innate ability it's an innate ability sleepy ways chicho Chicho, one of my roommates got COVID. Oh no, it's been super stressful to build a system where I also don't get sick. Oh yeah, yeah, just you gotta be super careful, right? We had a family member um, in our house, uh, not where I live, but in a different city where they're living together. One of them got COVID and that one was taking care of the one that got COVID and the other person didn't get COVID. So they were very careful wearing masks, sanitizing and stuff like that. So. It can work sleepy waves don't stress out too much about it there you know don't worry about things you cannot control but this you can partially control by being more careful right tommy tommy g harding tommy g harding if all math teachers were as good as you we'd have a lot more people working in stem we we'd have a lot more peace in the world i think i think if um and that's one of the these my thesis regarding mathematics i think if everyone was literate in the language of mathematics then this world would be a much better place to live for everyone that's my take okay so anyways i want to do some math that shows investing tommy 100 percent agreed 100 like that's one of the reasons i've been going hardcore on this right for 15 years or so now <laughs> my math teacher kenny i i don't remember i remember one good math teacher i had that was in grade nine and that wasn't because she was a good math teacher it was just because she was a great human being she was a good teacher period it didn't really have too much to do about her math abilities i want to move the the mic a little closer is this legal i think so mathematics i think mathematics is legal we are live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chicho live, C H Y C H O L I V E. If you want to participate in the chat, Twitch is where you want to be at. And gang, thank you for the follows, thank you for the subs, thank you for being here, thank you for the support, thank you for the love. And when the mods roll in, mods, thank you for taking care of business. Sleepy so ways, what's better to open a 401 and save money on taxes this year? or and pay later or pay the taxes up front maybe we can do this through math uh sleepy waves investing is so personal it's so personal right it's not what's better all the time it's what's better for you 
how are you going to game the system how are you going to use the laws in place or the ways you can get around the laws legally in place how you can navigate through the bureaucracy to make optimum use of your investment really it's not just a question of it uh, by the way again this is not financial advice even though we're going to do a personal finance video tomorrow live stream tomorrow uh, not tomorrow um two days from now we're doing current events tomorrow this is not financial advice but it really depends what you're doing with the 401 right if you're if you're on full salary getting a paycheck every two weeks and you got no write-offs right you got no write-off man i'd maximize the 401 take the tax break because that kicks you into a lower tax bracket if you're taking borrowing money and you're not even working full-time to maximize your uh, it, it really depends man the only piggy hate you show hope you're doing well as always you probably know what my next question is i'm eating all of olives autumn olives <laughs> any snacks for you yeah i'm still eating all autumn olives man i've been munching on these things like mad this we're on our last bucket we've got one more bucket for this season to eat vitamin c galore we've gotten this season so they're fantastic these autumn olives man like really um this was the best autumn olive season ever as you can tell uh by how much i've been eating right autumn olives and i've eaten three hamburgers today <laughs> we cooked up hamburgers in the live stream yesterday so i cooked up three hamburgers uh, i ate up three hamburgers three sandwiches oh man i'm so full i actually i ate two of them with sandwiches and one of them just a patty a hamburger patty so good don't worry i'm not taking financial fine uh, financial finance okay uh system veil how many how many numbers between and including one and 100 aren't divisible by any of two three and five i would uh, to do this problem i'll just go sequentially up right that's what i would do take out all the even numbers they're all gone right so all of a sudden you don't have a one to a hundred take out number one take out number two and then take out all the even numbers so number one and number two takes you down to 98 numbers and then divide that by two because they're half the numbers are even so they're gone so now you're down to 48 right and then divide that by three 48 divided by three 16 right uh, no can you divide it by three no you can't divide it by three 48 and then i would have to think about it to see where we go from there system veil larkim 27 hello i don't think i've ever written anything here but i'm really happy about this distraction right now your videos always calm me down a lot and i like math awesome laura laura kim thank you for popping in and saying hello <laughs> hello hello v62p sleepy ways okay let me try another question that maybe you can answer through math how is money laundered through banks and art institutions we talked about this okay well i'll give you a little example okay i'll give you and this connects up to your personal finance video uh personal finance question right do you ever bring mathematics into uh investing or is it basically uh crapshoot do you ever bring mathematics into investing for sure 100 percent, tommy that's one of the places you use mathematics in a big way right what do you do for a living chicho you a full-time streamer uh full-time streamer uh no i don't make my money on streaming i there's a little bit of funds coming in from the content i create online that i've been doing for 15 years that we just hit our 1000th video right on youtube uh, but i do i i teach mathematics mathematics and physics uh, mainly mathematics and i have physics students as well um and that's what i do a private Welsh dragons how are you doing just wondering if it's just a UK thing do other countries use bed mass and uh, bid mass yeah a bod mass we use um, bed mass b e m a s you guys use b o d m a s and b i what's the i stand for we use e because e is uh, o 
operations, I guess. I I don't know what the I would stand for. For us is bed mass, brackets, exponents, multiplication, uh, division, bed, uh, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. <laughs> What's your smoke today, Chicho? Ah, this is mathematics, brother. But I heard uh, Durban poison is very good. What percentage is uh, uh, If I just uh, smoke this, not just pop, 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 pop. Oh, you want to do a little uh, enjoy smoke? Well, I just multiply 69 by 1.3. I have no idea what that what's that going to give you. How am I going to... I am literally lost. <laughs> Great stuff. I just uh, started private English lessons online. So far, so good. Yeah, it's fun to do. And I learn a lot from my students. Interesting. In the States, we learn ped mass. Parentheses. Ah, parentheses first. Interesting. The I is for indices, I think. Indices. Interesting. I have, I've never heard of the indices for the eye. So so far we got yeah, let's write this down. We got bed mass. We use bed mass. Bed mass. So we got bead mass. We got bod. Oops. Mass. And what was the other one? Peed mass. Peed mass. And by the way, this confuses the crap out of people, right? Oh yeah, my. Uh... <laughs> I want to see the brain. Hold on a second. Let me finish off my uh, intro. Uh, I do announce these live streams thirty minutes before we go live on Parlor, Elo, Minds, VK, Gab, and Twitter. You can follow the work there. The links will be in the description of this video. For live streams where we don't have any visuals we do upload the audio soundcloud as podcasts and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video to both bitshoot and youtube and you can follow the work there turn on notifications subscribe uh, like share comment and if you're on youtube you can turn on youtube notifications and the button notifications you can uh, support youtube membership uh, support this work through YouTube membership and the buttons there and for those of you who've been supporting uh, this work through YouTube membership thank you very much for the support as well as the people who've been supporting this work on patreon thank you very much for your support okay I'm gonna take these guys down I tend to forget to take these things down um, so I just go off on things right now let me tell you something about this right oh I remember bot mass backwards algebra I got a B in uh, G G C G C S E I heard kids don't learn long division anymore they use some other method long man I teach all my students long division it's ridiculously important people say it's not but it is the people who say it's not they're either really high level mathematics that they don't use the division or they've been using the calculator forever they don't know how to do long division right I've had arguments with people regarding long division. They're like, oh, it's used. It's not useless. It's exercise for the mind, right? Some people consider some of the most benign exercises you do in the gym to be useless because it's not building big muscles. But they're important. Doing exercises where you're doing balance is important. But people want to go there and lift heavy weights. No, no, no. It's important, right? How many unique ways are there? to arrange the letters in syllables that's uh the factorial combinatorix. here let me uh here this is the one this is the one you want s y m b o l s how many ways can you arrange this uh this is just a combinatorix question and the formula i believe is this one two three four five six seven seven factorial divided by any rep letters repeating we got two s's repeating so divided by two factorial it's just a formula right i don't know the proof behind it oh snap chicho got bit shoot and a parlor chicho duo <laughs> strawberry rhino must decentralize yo chicho how's it going starsky how are you doing gang by the way thank you for the subs thank you for the follows if i don't catch them okay my apologies hopefully that method is not dividing at all and when you have to use a calculator you don't you don't you don't need to use a calculator 
this is seven factorial seven times six times five times four times three times two times one two factorials two times one that kills that so we just do the multiplication right whatever this ends up being here five times six is 30 30 times seven is 270 270 times 12 whatever that ends up being right the idea of long division help help when doing synthetic division later exactly dub weaver and the layout on it is important I'll, here I'll, I'll show you what long division is but let me tell you something about this take a look at this thing a lot of people get lost with bed mass right they try to do algebra and they they're like I don't understand it and you go oh you do bed mass but bed mass is only half the answer right you do bed mass when you're simplifying so when you simplify when you simplify expressions you go this way when you're solving equations you go this way right you go this way so if you have questions where they say simplify you do bed mass when you got questions when they say solve you go this one sam dib right that's that's the thing right all these absolute rules in mathematics the only absolute in mathematics is you can divide by zero right and even that you can fudge it okay free assange wow totally forgot how to do factorial until now actually forgot about them entirely yeah sokotoa can you explain basic trick for sure Anna, we do yeah sokotoa sure we'll do sokotoa uh there was one other thing i wanted to do what was the what was someone commented they wanted um i was gonna do this someone asked something i forget what it was okay we'll go into sokotoa is that is that clear by the way what I'm saying here right <laughs> I am driven please correct pet mass pet mass did I do it right yeah peat mass parentheses exponents division multiplication and by the way these two guys division and multiplication have the same weight doesn't matter which one you do first to a certain degree that p mass oh p mass ah okay 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 but again it doesn't make a difference p mass sorry thank you <laughs> my little bit of dyslexic and i think see things backwards letters anyway what went first multiplication ping ping das multiplication before division wow sokotoa gives me high school flashback don't think i've heard it since we were taught ping das ping das but multiplication and division is the same weight for next <laughs> ping das is what's always been stuck in my head really i've never heard it case man how are you doing I, like division multiplication same weight doesn't make a difference addition subtraction same weight doesn't make a difference which one you do first so for example take a look I'm gonna do one s simple example of simplifying on one simple example of solving so you see the difference right same weight doesn't make a difference which one you do first watch this uh, 2x plus 1 minus 3 x is equal to i'm just gonna do uh, there's multiplication division uh, should we do division sure uh, oh not equal to my bad uh, let's go over two and over three right now watch this what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change this subtraction to an equal sign over here so this is going to be two x plus one is equal to 3x over 2 and over 3. 
And should we put exponents here? No, I don't want to put exponents right now. Okay, because I don't have room to work it. So right now, you're going to do bed mass or peat mass or pod pod mass or pim das. You're going to go this way. So you're going to do brackets first. Do we have anything to combine there? We don't. If I had this here, let's change this up so we actually have something to do inside the bracket. What if we had this? What if we had 2x, right? And this was 2x. So you do it inside the bracket first, right? So this becomes 3x. And over here, you would do it with I'm sort of changing things up, right? So this becomes 2, 3x over 3 is equal, minus 3x over 2. I'm running out of space. And then you got to do exponents. We have no exponents. Multiplication, division. So if we had anything to simplify here, we would have. We don't, right? And then you do additional subtraction. So we're at the subtraction, so we do this thing. So common denominator is 6. You multiply this thing by 2, so it becomes... Oh, yeah, actually, we do have multiplication. What am I saying? We've got the 2. Watch this. I'm going to do this in one shot. We did the brackets, right? Because we're running out of space. That was 3x. We did the brackets. We don't have an exponent. And then we've got multiplication and division. Oh, we got 2 times this. So that's 3x times 2 is 6x, right? Over 3. And then you can actually do division. You can do this division here. 6 over 3 is 2. So this becomes 2x minus 3x over 2, right? We got nothing else to simplify. Now you do your addition subtraction. Common denominator here is 2. So this becomes 4x minus 3x. And then you're still doing addition subtraction. So it's just x over 2, right? Sorry if it's really crushed up. It's just a concept I want you to appreciate, right? Over here, you're doing things this way. You're going to do addition subtraction first. It happens to be in a bracket too, so that works. So this would be 2, 3x over 3 is equal to 2, 3x over 2. And then we've got multiplication and division. Well, we've got multiplication here and we've got division here. So it doesn't make a difference which way we do it. So we, what we can do is just kill the these guys, right? Three kills the three. Now we've got 2x is equal to 3x over 2. Well, that doesn't make sense if, was, if you cross multiply, which is, again, you're dealing with addition, uh, multiplication, and division. You get 4x is equal to 3x. Oh, how do we do this? Well, you can. You bring that over, bring this over, you get... 3x, 4x, let me bring it over here. 4x minus 3x is x is equal to 0. So the only answer is x is equal to 0. You solve for it. That's it. Like, that's what you're doing. Okay. Simplifying go this way. Adding, um, solving go this way. I know the example wasn't the best, but I wanted to show both. And this is the simplest thing I could think of right away. Right. Practices on whatever it is uh, you guys are working on don't assume it's always bed mass it's always bed mass it's not solving is the other way around okay. as far as Sokotoa goes Sokotoa here let me sh let me explain to you what Sokotoa is okay so Sokotoa represents trig ratios that's what they're called trigonometric ratios right trig ratios right and the trig ratios say this so ka to right and i'm going to give you an analogy for this we're not even going to go into the doing trig equations yet or expressions or solving yet I'm going to write down what this is and then I'm going to give you an example just to see if it sticks, right? This means sine of an angle is equal to opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cos of an angle is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse and tan of an angle is equal to opposite 
over adjacent. And all that means is this. For any right angle triangle, okay, if you have an angle, we're saying that sine of this angle, we're defining it. Sine of this angle is the opposite side from this angle, which is this. Opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent side. Adjacent side. Okay. Now, people get confused on this a little bit. Okay. Graham, you're gifting five tier one subs to Chicho Lives community. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for the for the gifts, uh, Graham. Whilst Dragon has one, Gary from the Mitten has one, Leukemia has one, uh, Weekend and Barney's has one, Finnegan Fox has one, Hannah got a 100 heart pounding show love. Cheers, Graham Caseman says. Thank you, Graham. Okay. Now consider this analogy, right? Because a lot of people have a hard time appreciating case matter read ten thousand points. <laughs> nice. By the way, case man, we've been doing auctions. I'm gonna fingers crossed uh the packing video I should have up by tomorrow. Uh thank you for redeeming the uh the points. And Hannah, thank you for the one thousand bits. Crazy with work, crazy with work. So check this out. You weren't able to make uh, I come and go my depression keeps me on and off twitch randomly yeah it, and Hannah it's a good idea to unplug really gang it's a good idea not to consume even mathematics on a day I wouldn't I don't want to say mathematics because it's a really good idea to consume mathematics every day okay it gives you a certain perspective that you will never get anywhere else okay but consider this analogy because people have a hard time digesting this right what does it mean trig ratios what does it mean trig ratios they think it's some some random you know far off idea that really doesn't have any uh, applications in the real world it just doesn't make sense okay not sub rhino six redeem 500 points so it's not though okay now I've mentioned this we're gonna get back to this but now forget this right let's assume it's me and you right let's assume me Chicho oops I better spell my right my name correctly right this is what a ratio means the important word here is a ratio okay trigonometry is just a shape with three angles in it right three sides a pol polygon with three sides closed right well let's assume chicho has five dollars and you right you have forty dollars okay did i just knock 500 points to 500 points <laughs> maybe <laughs> I don't know this pandemic has put me into a depression I fight every day with addiction and sadness but I have done a long done a long way um, I haven't done cannabis in a month but I miss it so much my woman threatened to leave me sadly so I'm holding on as much uh, Hannah look you're not alone okay and this situation right now global situation right now has positives to it okay it's revealed a lot about our society don't hold on to the negatives right there's so much amazing stuff going on in the world tune out of mainstream corporate propaganda because they'll send you into a spiral of depression because they won't tell you all the positive things that have happened right people are learning new things People are connecting online. There's alternate platforms popping up, providing multiple avenues of you to be able to find what you need of sharing information. The veil has been lifted and people now see the lies through centralized power. 
people are building communities people are uh, building um, their uh, what do you call it they got the community gardens going they're growing food in their backyard they have a better relationship with the environment they have a better relationship with food they understand what security means food and community security hannah there's so much amazing stuff going on so much amazing stuff going on and as graham says keep doing the best you can man be nice people please awesome thanks for backing it up grand and case map thanks for taking care of business i missed it spider-man how you doing hello chicho and chat um it's rafa live rafa live how are you doing reincarnated i am glad to join in tonight i hope you're well you too rafa or agri pagu hello hello sup y'all math time while i'm watching kill nice keep joining us and you will find uh way long with us yeah I, we're all together right collaboration is the name of the game collaboration is the name of the game right i hear that but it's hard for me to stay positive it's just been really hard but i'm doing much better listening to chicho do math oddly makes me calmer awesome good stuff now let's talk about this check this out what is a ratio right here's one thing that they really don't emphasize uh as much as they should in let's say high school mathematics but they should be really teaching this in elementary school mathematics right this is such a good good game sugar ratios are so important for physics and for increasing your math power into cal huge and they're they're important to understand the concept of ratios now check this out look there's let me let me ask you this i'm going to give you two numbers right i'm going to give you this two over three right i'm giving you this it's one number really i'm giving you this ask yourself what does that mean to you what does that mean to you two over three right there's two ways you can go with this you can think about this as a fraction which means this is two-thirds of a whole part of a whole that's what a fraction is part of a whole right so two over three means two-thirds of a whole so if I draw a circle right and I break it up into three pieces two over three means two parts from three right that's one way you can think of two over three the other way you can think of two over three is as a ratio and a ratio is not part of a whole it's a comparison between two things right compare right so when I say two over three is a ratio that means two two three right that means two circles versus three circles right two two three in here if you look at it as a fraction there's three parts right over here if you talk to talk talk to this as a ratio there's actually five things going on let me separate this so you realize it's two different circles this is two two three okay it's a different thing it's a comparison combined and not combined okay now these things sokotoa are not fractions they're ratios that's important to really appreciate so that means when you write down sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse it means it's the length of the opposite side from the angle divided by the length of the opposite it doesn't mean part of a whole so if you do this if i say hey what's the ratio we're going to define a ratio right now okay we're going to say can i erase this i'm going to erase this part okay take a look please keep in mind what a ratio is right 
So if I if I say I'm going to define, I'm going to define. What should we define this as? We're going to define this as sine of sine of Chicho and cos of Chicho. We're going to define this. This is this is what we're going to define. Should we call it sine? I don't want you guys confused from this by sine theta, but I'm going to call it sine because I want to make sure you understand that this word here. It's just an English word or Latin word. I don't know where it comes from, right? This part is just the alphabet. It's up to us what we're defining as, as right? So I'm going to define the sign of C to be how much money you have divided by how much money I got, right? You over Chicho. Oops chicho and i'm going to define cos c as chicho divided by you <laughs> i keep on spelling my own name wrong chicho i'm trying to do the speedy gonzalez style because i'm beating it like really pushing this right how do you graph a piecewise function sure we'll do piecewise i'm going to do it here piecewise Piecewise. Piecewise are cool, right? So this is what I'm defining these at, right? So right now, based on our system, I'm going to call this absolute. Forever and ever and ever. If I have five dollars, you have forty. For every five dollars I have, you will acquire forty dollars. So if I have ten dollars, you will have eighty dollars. Cool. If I have $15, you will have $120. Cool. So I'm setting this to be an absolute, right? This is set in stone. This ratio, five to four. Okay. So right now, sine of C is U, 40 divided by five. And cos of C is five divided by 40. Does that make sense? That's what the trig ratios are, right? Why are they important? Because let's assume we have the following questions. Question. Let's say every month I, um, not even, I'm not going to take it to that level. Let's assume you want to find out how much money you will have if I end up having, if this ratio stands, if I end up having 20 five dollars if chicho has twenty five dollars if chicho has twenty five dollars then what's sine c equal to for chicho having twenty five dollars what would the answer be again if i have twenty five dollars because sine of c is the money you have divided by money i have so what's sine C if I have $25? What is this equal to? Well, this is the definition of sine C. The definition of sine C says it's the money you have divided by the money I have. Okay. So it's going to be the money you have divided by the money I have. And this ratio I've set to be absolute right that means if I have $25 then we have to figure out what you have right five times you have yeah so all you do you say oh okay this is what we need to find but this is an absolute and this absolute says 40 2 five right cross multiply kick the five up 25 up 25 five goes into 25 five times five times 40 you will have what two hundred dollars that's what a ratio is that's the power of a ratio it's something set in stone right it's a definition set in stone 
this goes into economics personal finance this goes into engineering this goes into everything biology chemistry this goes into everything the concept of ratios okay I really wanted to emphasize this because people have, one of the reasons people have a hard time with Sokotoa is because they don't understand what ratios are ratios is a comparison for one thing to another thing right now keep that in mind watch this So, sine of an angle, I was much into uh, hermetical math and doing prime numpire numbers, the building block of the numbers we deal with, really, right? Now, take a look at this thing. The definition of sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Definition of cos of an angle is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. Tan of an angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, right? Now, one place people get confused is they like to call the hypotenuse the adjacent, but the hypotenuse is the angle across from the 90 degrees, right? So the hypotenuse is called, we call the side across from the 90 degrees, right? And always keep in mind, in a triangle, an angle controls the opposite side, right? So this angle here controls this side here, right? If this side gets bigger this angle gets bigger okay college level trig was one of my favorite classes the applications of trig to a circle is beautifully beautifully elegant right and we can kick it there if you like now take a look at this thing that's what we're defining sine of an angle to be so I'm going to give you a triangle here's a triangle right. three four five and this is a legitimate triangle right it's a legitimate triangle take a look let's assume this is theta what sign of theta what sign of theta I want you to tell me what sign theta is cos theta is and tan theta is What's sine of theta, cos of theta, tan of theta? I want to drink some tea while well, you guys give us the answers. Thank you for the follows game. Like never looked at it that way. The ratio likewise. It, it, it's the only way to look at trigonometry. It's the only way to look at trigonometry. It's the way to look at trigonometry why because that's what it is is drink ratios they don't emphasize it i don't know why the system doesn't emphasize this it's insane to me what's sine of theta cos of theta tan of theta give me the values gang all right i'm okay with going chill style <laughs> sine theta cos theta tan theta For sine, I can see, but cos is diff different. Cos, what's the definition of cos? It's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And we call this the adjacent, not that one, because that one already has a name. It's called the hypotenuse. Sine theta is 3 over 5. This divided by that. Cos theta, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. The adjacent of theta divided by that. Right, four over five. Tan of theta. What's the definition of tan? Opposite side, opposite the angle, the side opposite the angle, divided by the adjacent to the angle. Okay. Three over four. All right. Cool. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean? All right. Well, let's find out what theta is right the longer hypotenuse is the smaller is cos theta then the longer uh, hypotenuse is the smaller is cos. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be smaller uh, this one but the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degrees that's what we call the hypotenuse 
right? Opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, opposite over uh, adjacent. Oop, <laughs> Gaze Man, I know. I've done that so many times, brother. <laughs> I did it bad. <laughs> you would make a great teacher then. <laughs> right? That's what it is, right? Now, check this out. Let's say I gave, listen to the teacher. <laughs> Let's say I gave you another triangle, right? I'm going to give you another triangle. I'm going to say this angle is the same as that angle, right? I just told you this angle is the same as that angle, right? We don't know what that angle is yet, but this angle is the same as that angle. And the sum of the angles in a triangle equals 180 degrees. So if that's 90, that's 90, that's the same as that, then this angle is the same as that. That we know. So this angle is the same as that. Now, I haven't told you what the angles are yet, right? Like, I haven't given you a number for the angle. Well, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm late. Let's go, boy. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> right? So check this out. I'm going to say this triangle is ginormous. I'm going to say this thing is 1, 2, 7, 5, right? That's how big it is. If this was three meters, this one is 1,275 meters. Right? But the angles are the same. You can, you can do it, right? You can have a triangle with the same dimensions and make a bigger triangle with the same angles. Not dimensions, but angles, right? Hayes, Hayes, one, two, three, Chicho, your VODs, VODs, keep on deleting. I wanted to rewash your cigar stream was epic the, I put him on uh, BitChute shoot and uh, YouTube the reason they're deleting is because I'm only an affiliate on twitch and the videos for affiliates automatically delete within two weeks I think right it's not up to me as far as I know there there isn't any settings I could say I could I could do on twitch for them to stay on twitch I upload them to BitChute shoot and YouTube once I become a partner on Twitch, I think the videos will stay there. Okay, so we're working towards that. We've, we're, we're hitting all the marks. We just need, on average, 70 viewers uh, for a month basis or something like that. We'll get it. We'll get there. Right. This could go on infinitely if it's the same angle. Exactly. You could have an infinite number of triangles, fractals, right? With the same angles so this angle is the same as that that's the same that's the same side but this side is huge well i'm going to ask you this what's this length and this length find this length and this length well if the angles are the same and these are trig ratios the definition of sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse so sine of this triangle was this sine of this triangle sine theta of this triangle is one question I, I, I would have adjacent isn't always constant as its variable I feel somehow confused for when I know these things can change the adjacent right but the adjacent the location of it is always right beside the angle so the adjacent changes based on which angle you're in if you're here on this angle the adjacent side is this and the opposite is this if you're on this angle the adjacent is this and the opposite is this right you are right on that uh, you are right it's relative to your perspective where you are right that's the definition of an angle maybe I shouldn't have used theta I could use a we could change this and say a do, do, do. here a let's call this a a and let's call this b and b that way all of these guys become a's right a a a right space up 
y over x for sine. y over x, sine, right? Sine of a is not going to be y over x, right? What's sine of a here for this triangle? What's sine a for this triangle? What's cos a for this triangle? And what's tan a for this triangle? For this guy. It's been a few years since I've done this. It's crazy how quickly you can forget, but also how quickly it comes back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Connor. And it's, look, I can honestly tell you, relearning mathematics, if you've forgotten mathematics, once you start relearning it with fresh eyes, uh, with eyes that have seen a little bit more of the world, wow, man, super powerful. Dusting off some neurons I haven't fired in about the five years, yeah. So sine, skag bones, for sure, for sine, yeah. Sine of A is one two seven five over y right cos of a is x over y tan of a is opposite over adjacent which is this over this one two seven five over x right make sense well if that's the case and A, this A is the same as that A. That's why they call them A's. They're the same. So sine A is 3 over 5. And sine A is this over this. That sine A is the same as that sine A. If that's the same as that, if that equals that, then that must equal that. Because that equals that, that equals that, and that equals that. It's just ratios, right? No, let's do the y. Well, let's do the y. So this will have to equal this. Where should we do this? Let's do it here. 3 over 5 has to equal 1, 2, 7, 5 over y. Cross multiply. So y or 3y is equal to 1, 7, 7, 5. Was that 7 or 2? Seven, 1, 2. 1, 2, 7, 5 times 5, and then you divide by 3, divide by 3, bring it over here. So y is equal to 1, 2, 7, 5 times 5 divided by 3. Is that equal to 2, 1, uh, 2, 5? I'm just going to do it on a calculator here. Uh, 1, 2, 7, 5. 1, 2, 7, 5 times 5 divided by 3 two. yeah so y is equal to 2 1 2 5 it has to be oh y sorry two. y is 2 1 2 5 there you go you just found y that's it in there's a little bit more just for intro trick right and then what does this mean by the way if this angle is the same as this angle then y has to be this the reason it has to be this because this divided by this is the same value as that divided by that this is equal to 0.6 right then that divided by that is 0.6 the ratio stays the same the ratio stays the same right for one single ratio on a constant adjacent there the adjacent is not a v variable but the other variables are not constant until at least two of uh, hypotenuse i'm assuming of thanos or hypotenuse and angle b is declared yeah you need three pieces of information one of them being a side for a triangle to be able to solve a triangle there's six pieces of information in the triangle there's three angles and three sides and if you have one side at least you can and two other pieces of info there could be two sides there could be two angles one angle another side you can solve all the rest okay so you can get all six bits of information in the triangle if you have 
three pieces of info and one of them has to be a side okay that's sort of intro trick and then if you want to find the angle well you can do this you can take inverse sine of it but i don't want to go there yet i i'd like to do the piecewise function as well because if this is intro trick this sort of gets you uh this the starting point right any questions regarding this we could do more we could come back to this but we could do let's do a piecewise function and then come back to this if you'd like lark bark how are you doing hey yo chicho hello there hello hello i have advanced questions that not not, not may not give more information not me okay Nafayat reading 1000 points <laughs> my brain always jumps to advanced trick but you got to get the fundamentals down first you got to get the fundamentals down first one of the reasons people have a hard time with grade 12 trick is because uh they don't have the fundamentals down where were you during my college years <laughs> depending on how old you were maybe i was taking college <laughs> i was i was in college i doubt it though i was in a college in the late 80s early 90s let's do piecewise function piecewise function All right on youtube chicho's math videos help me in college nice piecewise function let's graph two three different functions right now okay wishing well everyone i may lurk or tune up yeah thank you for popping in take a look at this thing i want to give you three functions here's function one y is equal to 2x plus 1. let's graph this function i hope you know how to graph this this is an equation of a line ah 36 going on 37 next month ah nice large break so uh, was i teaching math that when you were 37 you're 37 i was um uh, yeah i and you could have i was just getting into it i think 35 going on 36 i've decided that i'm 35 from now on <laughs> nice this is an equation of a line y is equal to 2x plus 1. so you go on 1 y intercept is 1. this is y equals mx plus b by the way i hope you guys know how to graph this right and then the slope is 2 over 1 so 1 2 and 1. here's this graph of this guy it's a line that goes like this right here's another thing i want you to graph right y is equal to five how does this look y is equal to five whoa line slopes more dusty brain cells <laughs> y is equal to five says no it's not a dot that's a mistake that a lot of people make it's a dot it's not a dot i've told you that this is a function and this says y is equal to five and when it says that straight line on y is equals five it's a line it says y is five everywhere all the time forever so you're gonna go one two three four five and you're gonna go whoop, two. so it doesn't make a difference what x is y is always five it's that absolute right Here's another function. I'm going to give you the point three, and actually let's go negative three and six. And it's, it is a function by definition. Yeah, y is equal to five. Function. If I said x is equal to five, we have vertical line, and that's not a function, right? But we said we're going to graph piecewise functions, so let's do this this is a point for a given x value you have a y value negative three and six negative three one two three and six one two three four five six and that's this function right negative three and six 
Well, I'm going to make a brand new function, right? And I'm going to take all these three functions and create one function. Okay. The new function I'm creating, let's call this y1. This is y2. And this is y3 if you want. y3. And it's not even really a y3. It's a function f of x3, right? f of x better. But let's use y for now. I'm going to create a new function, y4. y4. And y4 is equal to this. y4 is equal to y1 when x is greater than 3. y4 is equal to y2 when x is less than or equal to 3 but greater than negative 2 and y4 is equal to y3 for x less than negative 2 less than or equal to negative 2 okay do you see what i'm doing here i'm creating a new function that's taking this, taking this, taking this, putting them together by defining the functions for different locations on X. Let's graph Y4. Okay. Y4, the graph of Y4 is Y1, and Y1 is really 2X plus 1, right? So I can write down 2x plus 1 here. 2x plus 1. So y4 is equal to 2x plus 1 for x greater than 3. Okay. First thing you want to do when you're going to graph these things, graph this guy. Right? So you're going to go 2x plus 1 is 1 and then over to 1. So there's this guy. Right? But the problem is y4 is e only equal to this for x greater than 3. So let's put 3 here. 1, 2, 3. So y4 is equal to this line only for when x is greater than 3. So here's 3. So from here, with an open circle, because it doesn't include 3, you get that. The rest of this you kill. Because y4 is only equal to this for x greater than 3. Okay. Is that clear? Now, for x between negative 2 and 3, negative 2 and 3, it's y2, and it means it's equal to 5. So y4 is equal to 5 between negative 2 and 3. Okay, between negative 2, and it doesn't equal negative 2, so open circle at negative 2 at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 2, open circle to 3, close circle. That's this. All right, cool. So y4 is equal to 5 between negative 2 and 3. And for any x is less than negative 2, right? Less than negative 2, it's y3. And y3 is just a point. I can just put a point there. Negative 3 and 6. Okay. So whenever x goes less than negative 3, and I don't even think this is like legit terminology, but I'm just trying to show you what it looks like negative 3 and 6 so negative 3 and 6 is a dot there you go this function y4 looks like that and it's made up of three different functions that's what a piecewise function is a piecewise function says at a certain point the function behave differently the function looks different it doesn't it's a new 
equation that defines that function, right? That's all. That's what a piecewise function is. This is a pretty simple piecewise function. You can have multiple different types of piecewise functions, right? Functions and definitions do create the graphs. Yeah, you have to sort of look at your functions and try to appreciate what it is it's saying. Is it your B day, case man? Happy early B day. I didn't catch the B day part, but. Da -da -da -da. Dusting off the math, math uh, neurons is good on a B day. All right. Is that clear? And you could have tons of crazy types of piecewise functions. You could have something like this. Here's a graph. Your graph from here to here could act like a parabola and then act like a line and then be dots and then from here become an exponential right like you could have any type of functions CMAS 420, how are you doing? I'm not sure I speak the language you're typing. Happy MNM9. Thanks, Chicho. I could not break it down when looking at a at a Y4, but it is much easier when you did one, two, three. Yeah. And that's you should you have to approach it from that side. Approach it as a piecewise function. Pieces of other functions put together to define a new function okay CMAS says he doesn't get it which part don't you get JSA I have no idea what that says swag boy flex how do we find potential intercepts of two or more functions sure let's do it How to do quadratics that's what he's saying how to do quadratics uh, let's do a quadratic here we'll do one ready is what he said I need to teach square functions square functions square functions square functions square functions I'm not sure what square uh, quadratics that's what you must you must be referring to and I don't know how to begin square root square squared functions that's what you probably mean so quadratics okay take a look at this thing uh, who asked for the intersection of two lines do, 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 do. swag boy okay quadratics swag boy take a look at this thing uh can i incorporate intercept two functions we'll do two functions um sure let's do two functions i'm going to give you let's find the intersection between a line and a quadratic so we're gonna put swag boy and parabolas yeah swag boy and cmas 420 together okay take a look the question is this uh solve for the following system uh equations okay and the system is this your first equation is y is equal to 2x minus 1 and your second equation is y is equal to do you know how to do simple quadratics cmas x squared or can you do more complicated can you do more complicated than x squared if you just want to do x squared we can stick with this if you can do a little bit more complicated we'll do a little bit more complicated but if you're iffy on this we'll stick with this okay let's just stick with this let's stick with this okay so to get a visual okay think about it this way first thing you want to do is graph both things i can do a harder one you can do a harder one here watch this here we'll do one little harder one i'm going to do this minus and I'm going to go plus 
uh, four. Okay, I'm not going to put the the x term in there. You can do much harder than this. Can I do kick it up one more level? Let's kick it up one more level. Okay, I'm going to do this. Minus x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay. Sure. Let's just do this. I didn't kick it a full level, but this is good enough. Okay. So if you want to understand what this question is asking you, for, for solve for the following system of equations, it's basically asking you if these two functions intersect, where do they intersect? I'm back in four minutes. You're back in four minutes. Okay, you got to go pee. Go take a pee. <laughs> go grab a sandwich, right? Before I get into graphing this, I'm going to have a drink of water. Uh, gang, if you eat meat, if your diet for some reason you need a lot of protein, you're eating a lot of protein, you're going to get thirsty. Drink a lot of water. very nice 2 a.m in your country oh wow you got my full attention Chicho. okay let's do this watch this so let's get an appreciation of what this system of equations these two equations look like on a single graph wanted to tune in for a bit before bed now i'm hooked awesome let's graph this guy first equation one This is y equals mx plus b. It's a line. So the y-intercept is negative 1. And the slope is 2 over 1. So 1, 2, and then you go over 1. There's your first equation, first function. When you graph these things, number them. This is equation 1. Let's graph this guy. How do you graph a parabola? Oh, we can make a table of values, but man, that's hit and miss, right? Because you got to get both sides of the axis of symmetry so one way you can do this is you can do something called completing the square the square and by the way to solve this algebraically you don't need to graph it but we're graphing it to get a visual of what's going on second one has arms directed down yep because it's negative so if you're going to complete the square to this you're going to basically write it in a form that you can read it right that's what i did with this this equation is y is equal to mx plus b it's an equation of a line this is the y intercept that's the slope you graph it right you put it in the right form to be able to read it correctly to be able to graph it so for this one we're going to complete the square y is equal to negative x squared plus 4x plus 4. and we've done lots of videos on completing the square Okay, I'm going to do it Speedy Gonzalez here. Okay, I'm going to write a little bit bigger so you guys see it better. And if you do Chicho completing the square, videos will pop up that will show you what this, how this process works. I'm going to do it quick right now. First thing you do, you put... Here, I'll do this with red so you see. Let me bring out the new... I went and bought a whole bunch of new felts. Right? So you put brackets around this, the x squared and the x term. Can you see that well enough? I'm gonna make it darker, right? And thank you for the follows, thank you for the subs again. Now, what you're doing right now, CMAS, when you set it equal to zero, you're only gonna be graphing the x-intercepts. I want you to graph this whole problem, not just find the x-intercepts. We don't need to find the x-intercepts to get this visual happening right now. Next thing you do is you take the number in front of the x squared, bring it out. You want the number to be in front of the x squared to be a 1. Okay. So this becomes a negative number comes out. This becomes x squared. And because the 4x is also inside the bracket, you're factoring out a negative from this, so this becomes minus 4x, okay? 
Next step is you take the negative 4, okay, divided by 2, you get negative 2, and square it, you get 4. Okay. And then you add and subtract 4 inside the brackets. I'm not going to go too much detail with it of why you do this. Okay. We talked about this. X plus 4 minus 4 plus 4. Okay. So you add and subtract that inside the brackets. Now what you do is you grab this guy, bring it out of the brackets. When it comes out of the brackets, whatever in, is in front of the brackets multiplies that, right? And that's a negative 1. So multiply by negative 1, it becomes plus 4. This is now a perfect square, and its root is negative 2. So this becomes, met with it before, we, we can do this. Yeah, you can do this. You've done this, yes? So this becomes negative x minus 2 squared plus 8. So this is your y2, y2, because that was your y2, and here is y1, right? So now you have this in a form that you can just read it and graph it. When you're reading these things, this is a quadratic formula, this becomes your vertex. The vertex is the opposite sign of this and that, 2 and 8. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The negative number means, says it opens down. The y-intercept is 4. You can go back here, set x is equal to 0, you get 4, right? So if you want to find out what y is when x is 4, just put 0 here. When x is 0, y is 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. So the parabola goes down like this. Parabolas are symmetrical about the line, the axis of symmetry. So if this is 2 units away, then that's 2 units away, so it looks like this. Right? That's equation 2. That's your parabola. Okay. Now, what does it mean when it says solve for the following system of equations it means if these two lines cross if these two functions cross now that's clear for me awesome is that good because there is more to this a little bit right you're very welcome uh cmas 420 okay like it, it it's simple you just have to follow in proper order right awesome so when it says you want to solve the system of equations, you're trying to find out if this two functions cross, where they cross. So you want to find out they happen to cross. Sometimes they don't cross, right? But these two things happen to cross in two different locations, here and here. So when we want to solve them, we want to find the coordinates of this point and we want to find the coordinates of this point. Right? We want to know what they are. Well, we know they're both x's and y's, right? So there's got to be an x here and there's got to be a y here. Let's call this x1 and y1 because that's the first point where they cross. And let's call this x2 and y2. x2 and y2, where they cross. Now, when I say y2, I don't mean this function. I mean the second point, right? So all you do is say, okay, this point here, x and y, exists, right? Both on this line and on the parabola, right? It does. This point, x and y, at this x value, if you plug that in for x, you're going to get this y. And if you plug in this x here, you're going to get the same y, right? So if you're trying to find out what this point is, you're trying to find out when this y is equal to this y is equal to this y, because they're the same y. That point is on both those lines, both those functions. So all you do, you just set this equal to this. So you say, if you're going to solve this, you say solve set 
y1 equal to y2. You're going to set this equal to this. That means this 2x minus 1 is going to be equal to negative x squared plus 4x plus 4. You set y1 equal to y2. Right? And you solve for this now. Right? And if you're solving for this, just bring everything to one side. Let's bring all of these guys to this side. So if you bring all of those guys to that side, it becomes x squared. This becomes 2x minus 4x is negative 2x. This becomes negative, five, negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 is equal to 0. Right. How do you solve this quadratic? You can factor it manually, but I can't think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative 5 and I have to give you negative 2. Oh, that's neat. I didn't think of it like that. Now, delta cool that's slick yeah that's what it is right which is crazy cool when do they equal each other where on the graph does do they have this the same x will give you the same y do they have a point that exists on both this function and that function well i can't think of two numbers that multiply to give you negative five i have to give you negative two so you just use the quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a which is negative b which is 2 plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 5 over 2 times 1 which is equal to 2 plus or minus square root of negative 4 times negative 5 is uh, 20 oh that's way faster 4 plus 20 24 <laughs> that i used to learn right so 20 24 oh. over 2 i'm going to do this bring it out where we're going to do it let's do this thing here all right so x here let's do a little thing here so right now we've got x is equal to 2 plus or minus. Now square root of 24. Square root of 24. Square root of 24. 24 breaks down into 2 times 6. Sorry, 2 times 12 or 4 times 6. Let's go. 4 times 6. 2, 2, 2, 3. So square root of 24 is 2 root 6. 2 root 6 divided by 2. 2 goes into both of those. So this becomes 1 plus or minus square root of 6. That's your x value. Right? Evening. Evening, Twitching Jason. How are you doing? So when x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 6, and 1 minus the square root of 6, you get this expression equal to 0. That gives you your x. Plug it into the equation, get your y. Okay. Dodging Jason, thank you for the cheers. By the way, nice cup in your upper corner. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this one, the black one. It's nice. It's a good cup. Shotgun, what are those? Shot the booty. <laughs> Alien booty. Alien booty. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious is that clear this is what's going on when you solve a system of equations could you show it to the camera yeah sure pretty let's see if it'll focus nicely This is pretty. It's nice. It's not expensive or anything, it's just pretty. Okay. 
that is more understandable i've got to learn the quadratic you need to learn the quadratic formula it saves you a lot of time right and then what you would do uh, what you end up having by the way we set this equal to this and we've got two different x's right x is equal to x is equal to one plus the square root of six and x is equal to one minus the square root of six well, we have two places, two different x's. When you plug it in, you get two different y's, and those are the two places where the two functions cross. And that's all there's to it, really. It's super cool, super cool, okay, super cool. How do you still remember that? I've been out of school for only six years, and I have zero recollection of any of that, Jack. Uh, shotgun shot done the quadratic formula i never forgot you end up using it so much is it's just it didn't forget it sometimes i would struggle with when someone asked me what's the area of a circle i was like when i wasn't doing mathematics i was like uh pi squared uh, uh, and then they would go quadratic formula negative b plus or minus squared or b squared minus 4ac over 2a it just uses so much. Yeah, I'm glad it helps, Swag Boy. Is repetition an effective way of memorizing work? Memorizing work, sure. Understanding work, no. Uh, and I don't recommend uh, going into mathematics with memorization. <laughs> Thanks, Twitching Jason. <laughs> I love the little bits. <laughs> right? so it i don't recommend approaching mathematics through realm of memorization i would say try to understand uh, why things are the way they are that's the best way to be okay that's the best way to look at it thank you again gang for the follows and the subs we big i like little rhymes like twinkle twinkle little star circumference equals 2 pi r ah i've never heard that before i use those with kids i tutor i've never even heard it before <laughs> twinkle twinkle little star circumference equals 2 pi r ah, i love that that's cool i'm not uh, i have mantras in math that i give people my mantras two of the mon what's one of the first mantras you you should just a hum right the sign in front of the number goes with a number right the sign in front of the number goes with a number so that's not a one that's a negative one that's not a four that's a positive four that's not a two that's a positive two that's not a negative x that's a negative one right the sign in front of the number goes with the number right do we have another negative that's not a two that's a negative two right that's not a five that's a negative five right the other one is reduce before you multiply. Any book recommendation for someone desiring to have a deeper understanding of basic math? Swag boy, I wish uh, I had read a book. Do I wish? I don't know if I wish. I wish I knew of knew of a book that I've read to understand the core basic mathematics. But I, I didn't. I learned. I, even though I, you know, I studied mathematics, got my minor in mathematics, I'm a, I got my degree in geophysics, I really didn't understand mathematics until I started teaching mathematics. And the reason I, I, I began to understand mathematics is because students would ask me questions. They would go, Chicho, why do we do this? And I didn't know the answer because I just knew we did this. So I would go online, grab books, multiple books, and do things and think about it. I'd go, why are we doing this? Because the answers are not obvious. They don't tell you the why. They just tell you to do. And then after answering so many questions over the years, I began to understand why we do a lot of the things that we do do. Uh, so uh, any good book recommendations? Uh, yeah, but I haven't written it yet. <laughs> give, me a, give me a few years. Uh, I'll write a book. Uh, and I'll start recommending that book. Uh, to teach mathematics and to understand mathematics because I, I i know they're out there i just haven't read them i have to figure this out by doing by explaining 
Okay. If you want good calculus books, I've done a good calculus book recommendation, but that's calculus, right? I use that the calculus book recommendation that I um, that I recommend in that video. I've done a couple of videos of book more than a couple of videos of book recommendations, and there's one main calculus book that I've used uh, to learn one book that I've used to learn calculus, and that's my two go-to book. Uh, I don't have it handy right now. It's in another room. Shut down. I'm really good at quick math, but when it comes to these formulas, I am so lost and then I feel stupid. But I can solve easy math problems in my head, yeah. But formulas, I'm lost at this point. Uh, the reason you're lost, shut down, is because you don't know your algebra. Learn the rules of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Learn algebra, let the pen and paper. I like, I don't. I don't teach my students to memorize or to do things in their heads rapidly under a time crunch. I tell them, let the pen and paper do the work for you. Why do extra work, right? And when you go to the gym to work out, I have a friend that, you know, he's a bodybuilder, he's a fitness trainer, stuff like this. He goes, Chicho, people are, people are stupid. They go to the gym, they think the best way to work out is to lift the heaviest thing they can. Oh, struggle and they, you know, hurt themselves, torn ligaments and all this jazz. He goes, I tell my clients, lift light, lift it well, do, do the correct posture, right? And that's how he teaches people to bodybuild and the guy's done competitions doing this right so he goes I don't want to lift more weight than I have to right I don't want to process more data than I have to in my brain when I got pen and paper that can do the work for me I'll save that brain brain power to do more you know use it down the line right I'm gonna remember pi equals r forever now. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star. Circumference equals two pi r. <laughs> I like that god of gadgets. It's really weird. No matter how complicated something looks, it's always the explaining that decided whether it's hard or easy. Yeah, indeed. Skag bars. Bones. Skag bones. Hey, we've got two swag. Oh, we've got swag and skag. Sk wow, skag and swag. Good thing. My math teacher told me that tutoring and teaching is a great way of learning mathematics quickly. Indeed. I'm just scared. Do it. Really. Uh, do it. If you want to learn math, start teaching. Right? Can you show me the how to find gradients, please? Y equals MX plus... Uh, mx plus b uh, you guys use c okay makes sense yeah sure let's do y equals mx plus b uh, i would like you to teach at my school more Mo morrison I don't, I don't teach in an institution i wouldn't last there okay gradients so you're talking about slopes take a look at this thing how's our time going you should you should be the key not the whole referring to your data thingy ah we've got time let's do this take a look at this thing let me let me draw you a line right let's go from here to here and make the line go continuous so we're going from these two points let's call this one let's call this one two three four Let's call this two, three, four, four. Actually, uh, let's make this here. We'll make this one five so we don't get confused. Six, seven, eight, less eight. All right. So right now we have the following two, right? This point is one and five, one and five. And this point is four and eight, right? Those are the two points okay so what you want to do there's two properties of a line that you need y is equal to mx plus 
B. And who was it? God of gadgets? You guys are calling it C. In my part of the world, we call it B. And what these are, a line is a simple function, one of the simplest functions there is, right? This is the slope. The M is the slope which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is rise over run right rise over run okay and the b is the y-intercept the y-intercept is here for this function we don't know what it is yet right you actually memorize me dude mesmerize me dude i can listen to you all day talking about anything you always grab my attention big fan of awesome shot shot down thanks for being here <laughs> i'm going to talk about pebbles on the next stream <laughs> she was too anti-establishment work as well yeah i couldn't function in the school man i get fired in a week if i lasted that long that's interesting how the english system is different my style is y equals kx plus m whoa kx plus m where, where are you from uh cabernicus cabernicus uh, where are you from it's cool and it's super cool different parts of the world sweden wow 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 right so the way you do this is you want to figure out what the slope of this line is the slope is how much you rise over how much you run let's zoom this in area zoom into this area right so these were your two points right this was one and five and this was four and eight so this was our line i've just zoomed into this right so we have more room to work with okay so the rise is how high did you go from this point to how far you went down the line right so what would the distance here be it would be this minus this, which is y2 minus y1, right? y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1. This is 8 minus 5, which is 3. This is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So what's the slope of this line? The slope of this line is equal to 3 over 3 which is equal to 1 right repo hello how are you doing oh dipper I don't understand what you did with rad 24 in the previous exercise rad 24 uh, oh the square root yeah sure I'll show it to you sorry uh, but only now I can send this Max, because of the chat, uh, only for okay, sure. Uh, let me take a little break from this. This is what I did with the radical square root. I, I hope it's okay. We take a little tangent from this, okay? Sent you a little tip to grab a coffee or tea uh, on me through PayPal. Ah, thank you very much, Sean Dunn. Appreciate it. Watch this square root of 24, right? I haven't done math in such a long time, people. I wish I understood der uh, derivations and how these mathematicians reach uh, into the ether and arrive at their rubble. They don't reach into the ether. They use the rules of mathematics and they just bring things together and then build it and go, wow, look at what I came up with. Really, that's exactly what they do. That's all they do, right? If you're taking the square root of 24, right? Square root, this symbol here, okay, is a radical. If there's no number here, it means two. What that means is, if you have two of a kind here, you can bring them out as a single, as a one, right? So what you do, you break these things down into their prime factor trees. By the way, if you do Chicho uh, radicals, 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 okay, Chicho radicals i've done some videos on this i did a whole series on this but there's an asmr video that we did it's like hour long maybe explains this really well right and i i did a whole year summer of putting exponents and radicals together and that does a fantastic job explaining this stuff but take a look at this thing this says break this thing now 2 times 12 is 24 12 is 2 times 6 6 is 2 times 3. if it's a square root of 24 it means find two of a kind you can bring them out as a single so here's two twos they can come out of a symbol as a single they merge together as one thing 
and then inside and anything you split is dead right but inside we've got two and a three they can't pair up so two times three is six is the square root of six okay watch this what if i said i want the cube root of 24. well 24 is two times two times two times three two times two times two times three well cube root of 24 cube root says you're looking for three of a kind three of a kind can come out as a single here's three twos they can come out as a two this guy can't come out because it doesn't have two other ones to hook up with to come out right so you got cube root of three left is that clear i know it's just jumping right in and doing it but that's basically what it means look for okay okay clear okay awesome as far as this thing goes coming up with the equation of this line if you want so right now we found the slope y is equal to 1x plus b all we need to do is find b the y-intercept you're very welcome old dipper uh, i'm glad you find it useful and it's the radical is super cool and radical is just denominators and the exponents but we'll leave that alone for now right so we want to find out what b is the way you can find out what b is is just take a point and plug it in for x and y we're going to do for both of them we're going to get the same b right test put in one and five because we know that point is on the line and do this as well four and eight if you get the same b you know you did it right right so plug this in y is 5 is equal to 1 times 1 plus b 5 is equal to 1 plus b so b is equal to bring it over 4 so this is actually at 4 comes out exactly at 4 but let's do a do it on this side make sure that's the case 8 is y 1 times 4 plus b 8 is equal to 4 plus b bring the 4 over minus 4 so b is equal to 4 oh look it's the same b it's the same y stuff the reason it's the same y stuff is because we came up with the same line we generate the equation of the line for the same two points it better be the same y if these two were different then we did something wrong so the equation of this line is y is equal to 1x plus four that's the equation of the line that is formed by this point and that point that's all right y equals mx plus b cool i should really go to bed it's almost 3 a.m i should watch the vod tomorrow yeah and you got two weeks to watch it on uh twitch and uh, i'll have it up on bitchute and youtube in a couple yeah not a couple of days but about three or four days four or five days okay there's a lag between the time i put it on um, and whatnot oh i got it awesome god of gadgets again we're almost uh, into two hours so let's call it a call the stream okay nice tutoring session by the way this was a great session i liked it thank you for the question should be fine for me chicho sean yo how are you doing thanks my pleasure gang and but gang i saw a lot of follows coming through thank you for the follows good math good maths thank you for the follows thank you for being here thank you for the interaction thank you for uh, the subs graham thank you for um gifting the five subs uh that's amazing fantastic this is amazing i hope you get the most popular you can thank you crew cruz jesus cruz jesus i'm pronouncing that right Bore stream when chicho cooking stream cooking stream we just made a whole bunch of hamburgers yesterday we did i made 50 hamburgers yesterday <laughs> i ate three of them today i ate like i don't know how many yesterday uh so we we did like a three and a half hour cooking session we made like tons of hamburgers 50 50 hamburgers so i cooked up 18 of them so we're going to eat them for like a couple of days right two or three days right and i put 32 in the freezer right at in freezer lock bags so there's eight of them right so whenever we want to have hamburgers we had eight days more than that we're not going to eat eight hamburgers in a day right uh so 
we have enough hamburgers to eat for a few days perfect cook won't cook for one day eat for multiple days and save some in the freezer so you can have it again right are they smaller oh they're pretty good size man. they're like this big <laughs> they're, it's a good size it's yummy i took six pounds of beef uh, ground beef uh, six pounds of beef uh we had potatoes in there onions in there a whole bunch of stuff it was good very delicious i'm not on discord at the moment and i'm missing streams oh no bureaucracy kills bureaucracy kills i haven't seen you forever what's going on uh put the what do you call it um check out the patreon page i'm starting to pin the schedule on the patreon page so if you go to patreon if i have any schedules lined up it should be the top post okay and if you follow on twitch it should send you notifications uh, you don't have to subscribe but skag bones preparing food is never bad saves a lot of time and you can put a lot of love in cooking see yeah for sure it tastes better you know what you're putting you know what you're eating you eat healthier you are healthier so important got to go watch that yeah it was super good <laughs> it was a fun stream <laughs> cooking season yeah and different uh vegetables and fruits coming to harvest like different seasons you get different fruits and vegetables and you can use them fresh local re amazing gang gang thanks for being here if you want to know what this is about i'm on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho everything i do is layered on mathematics this is full-on mathematics we do a lot of other things mathematics layered on mathematics where we're going to connect them up in one way or another right and we have a lot of them already i live in south africa south africa peace brother hope you're doing well down there 3 47 a.m go to bed you need sleep so i am on patreon i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike okay if you like the work there if you like what we're doing and if you have the means to support this work patreon is a great way to do so and for those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for the support we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in the chat in these discussions twitch is where you want to be at and those of you who are are on twitch supporting this work on twitch following on twitch subscribing on twitch donating bits on twitch doing tips of coffee and tea through paypal streamlabs or whatever it is thank you very much for the support gang thanks for being here great discussions great questions love doing mathematics i do announce these live streams on parlor lo minds vk gab and twitter you can follow the work there and the links will be in the description of this video and we do have a discord page and there's a lot of discussions taking on uh taking place on different channels different folders regarding different topics one of them being mathematics of course skag bones thanks a lot for the stream so good night and have a good evening you guys as well gang and good morning to our south african friends and people on uh, the other side of the world right uh for live streams we don't have any visuals involved we do right now we will be uploading the audio to soundcloud soundcloud.com uh forward slash chicho chycho as podcasts and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video to bitshoot and youtube mathematics everywhere right and if you want to support this work on those platforms you can like share you can follow you can subscribe you can comment you can like and if you turn on notifications for sure then if you're on youtube you can join youtube membership and for those of you who've joined youtube membership thank you very much for the support gang i hope you have a fantastic evening we got live streams hooked up for the next three days and then one more so we got current events tomorrow evening uh, starting at 7 30 personal finance sunday evening starting at 7 30 we got uh, relationships on monday that we're going to talk about and we got we're going to be talking about uh, privacy and censorship on wednesday gang I hope you guys have a fantastic day and i'll see you guys in the next few streams you can make it bye everyone